Hello, welcome back to Fragmental. I'm Chris, thanks for joining me. There are a few fragrance releases dropping this year in 2023 that I'm not just excited about, I am beyond excited. Let's get into it. It's been a few weeks since I've been sat here having a chat with you. I've been off gallivanting, but now I'm back and I'm here to talk to you about fragrance releases that I cannot wait to try. Don't you find new fragrance releases really frustrating? We get a leak or an announcement, we all get excited, and then we're like, when? When's it coming? Give me a date, give me a heads up. But fragrance brands don't seem to do release dates. Yeah, they'll give us some vague period in time, like summer 2023 or whatever, but no actual specifics. They must have them. They must have release dates locked in because they must have deadlines to meet, financial predictions to make. That's how businesses work. But no, we're just left hanging. I get release dates are different in different regions around the world, but they must have that info. And they need to let me know because I want to take a couple of days off work, line up outside Selfridges, be the first in line for these new fragrances. Works for Apple. All right, here's what's coming up that I am beyond excited to try. We've got Mont Blanc Explorer Platinum, Spice Bomb Infrared EDP, Jean-Paul Gaultier La Malle Elixir, two from Galan, two Privés. We've got Habit Rouge Privé and L'Homme Ideal Platine Privé and Aqua de Jo Parfum. First, let's talk about Mont Blanc Explorer Platinum. The first Explorer got loads of hype, went down really well. Big seller for Mont Blanc. The Flanker Ultra Blue, eh, not so much. This was Mont Blanc jumping on the blue marine aquatic trend, which was maybe kind of played out by the time Mont Blanc decided to come to the party. It was a decent fragrance. I liked it, I smelled it didn't really excite me. For me, it didn't really warrant a purchase. The first Explorer though, with its Aventus-like DNA, got a lot of positivity. Not exactly the same as Aventus, but you can't deny it's in that ballpark. I liked it, really great fragrance. I'm just interested whether Ultra Blue was just a little blip and if Mont Blanc can recapture that hype with Platinum. I'm a little bit on the fence about it because I think a lot of the positivity around Explorer was that it was fairly similar to Aventus and way more affordable. So unless Mont Blanc can pull something really special out of the bag with Platinum, I don't know if it's gonna get the same amount of hype, but I remain hopeful. Let's have a look at the notes. In this one, we've got grapefruit, violet leaves, clary sage, cedarwood, and an amber accord. Just going off these notes, it does sound like it could be a fresher scent than Explorer, which had some leather to give it some depth. Kind of makes sense that it's gonna be a fresh-ish scent for a summertime release, but I must admit, just looking at that note breakdown, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be that much of a distinctive fragrance, but you can never tell just looking at the notes. As I said, Explorer was a very successful release for Mont Blanc, possibly riding on the coattails of Aventus, so it'll be interesting to see if Mont Blanc can come up with something truly original. They tried that with Ultra Blue, didn't really work, didn't really get the traction. Let's see if they can do anything with Platinum. I've got my bottle on order, so as soon as I receive that and I've smelled it and given it a couple of wearings, I'll report back to you and let you know. Have you smelled this one yet? If you have, let me know. How does it smell? I'm excited. No, sorry. Beyond excited to try the latest release upcoming from Victor and Rolf. This is Spice Bomb Infrared EDP. Now I had to go back and check the infrared, which I loved when this came out and I think it was 2021. I had to go back and double check that this was an EDT because it just smells quite thick and rich and could easily pass as a eau de parfum in my opinion. But we have an EDP coming. It will be interesting to see if they've changed things up. With this one, they rekindled the spicy formula of the OG Spice Bomb and Extreme. Not so much with the Night Vision line. They departed from that Spice Bomb type DNA. I thought the EDP was pretty decent, but the EDT was pretty pants. Just like with the Night Vision line, they had an EDT, then they released an EDP. It'll be interesting because the difference between the EDT and the EDP was quite significant. I thought the EDT was just very generic, bordering on 
boring, didn't excite me very much. A very meh release. It was fine, it was wearable, but nothing that great. The EDP, however, I thought was much better. They must have changed the structure. It wasn't just the case of it being a stronger concentration, being an EDP. I actually felt like the overall profile of the scent had been improved. Whether or not they can do the same thing with this, I kind of don't want them to change too much about infrared because I really enjoy the way this smells. If they can improve upon that, Great, I'm all for that, but I don't want them to change it too much. We'll have to see what happens with that. I quite like the marketing strategy they've got going on with these fragrances with the Night Vision line and the infrared line. Night Vision has a green theme. The bottle label is green and the notes in there are green, things like green apple, green peppers. Infrared has uh, lots of red notes, basically all the notes they can put the word red in front of, red berries, red pepper, there's some cinnamon in here. In terms of the, the note breakdown for the new EDP, it seems pretty similar in the top and the mid as the EDT, although there isn't tobacco in this one, or at least it's not listed in the notes. What we do have though in place of that is leather and smoky resinous woods and uh, I do like the sound of that. I love a sweet spicy leather fragrance so throw that into the infrared formula and we could end up with something really good. The performance for me on the EDT, absolutely fine. I, I get pretty decent performance, definitely above average. If the EDP is a little thicker and richer and, and denser, maybe a little bit more robust with the leather in there, if the performance is improved then great let's have it this already seems to have a release in poland why just poland why not the rest of europe uk the rest of the world why such a random scattershot release release dates please fragrance brands come on give it to me anyway super excited about the new infrared edp hopefully it appears here in the uk soon and when it does i will be pulling the trigger or maybe that should be pulling the pin these days, you are not a legit fragrance brand if you do not have an elixir in your lineup. So Jean-Paul Gaultier are coming to the party with La Mal Elixir. I love La Mal, one of my favourite fragrances of all time. Still wear it from time to time. I thought La Mal La Parfum was an excellent release. A lot of positivity for that one. I also enjoy a few of the other flankers, Au Fresh, In the Navy, Ultramal. Aviator and On Board kind of sucked ball so they can crash and burn and sink respectively. I am hoping so much that Elixir is not just a half-assed attempt like Aviator and On Board where I hope we get something equally as good if not better than La Mal La Parfum. Bottle looks bling as balls, possibly the best La Mal bottle yet. Yeah, love the gold stripes on there. There's some information about the fragrance on ifragranceofficial.com. It says extravagant and ultra sexy, the new fiery sailor La Mal Elixir melts any treasure with its aromatic fougere amber scent. The gold soaked torso exudes the seductive sophistication of the fragrance. Fresh lavender, warm tonka bean and gentle benzoin make up this extraordinarily lush perfume. Mmm, fiery sailor. Does that mean they're spicing up Lamal a little bit? Maybe throwing in some cardamom, some ginger, some cinnamon. A spiced up version of Lamal sounds pretty good to me. It's described as having a sensual amber accord, so it could have a nice smooth, rich texture. Popping spices up top, sensual amber in the base, Lamal DNA in the heart. This could be magnificent. Definitely an opportunity. Please, please don't drop the ball on this one, JPG. Lamal fanboy here, waiting for my mind to be blown. So if you wouldn't mind blowing me, that would be absolutely fantastic. Oh, and speaking of releases, give me a bloody release date. Let me know when it's coming so I can get some candles and a bottle of wine in for our first night together. And if Elixir is everything I hope it will be, I will definitely let it Elixir my balls. You know, if it's a, if it's a ball sprayer. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Cuba. If you love fragrance as much as I do, head over to my online store, luxparfum.co.uk. You'll find my favourite brands plus brands you can't find anywhere else in the UK. Link is in the description. Next, two new releases from the mighty Guerlain, Habi Rouge, Rouge Privé and L'Homme Dial Platine Privé. I have Habi Rouge EDP, really enjoy this fragrance. The brands say it's going to be a modern day reimagining of this one. They say it revisits Habi Rouge's legendary patchouli, vanilla and leather accord, giving it greater sensuality and power. Tanned leather notes mingle with warm vanilla and seductive patchouli to reveal an exceptional new reinterpretation of Habi Rouge. Adding a modern edge with more vanilla and possibly leaning more into the leather, 
liking the sound of that. L'Homme Ideal Platine Privé, quite a lot of fragrances in the Ideal range, but I think it's a solid lineup, so happy to see more fragrances added to it. This is what Galan say about this new fragrance. Galan perfumers have taken L'Homme Ideal's irresistible green almond accord and secretly re-orchestrated it for greater freshness and modernity. Here, its emblematic amaretto note appears all the more bitter and powerful, accentuated by a fresh combination of grapefruit essence and pink berries. Meanwhile, almond melds with powerful Haitian vetiver for a dual signature that makes it an exceptional reinterpretation of a Galan icon. I'm a big fan of the almond amaretto accord of the L'Homme Ideal line, so if a secret reorchestration can produce really good results, then... I'm here for it. Both these new releases focus on modernity and reimagining of tried and tested formulas. I trust Galan, so I'm hopeful about these releases. Both of them are dropping with me imminently, so when I've got them in my hands and I've smelled them, I will let you know. <laughs> Lastly, a new Aqua de Jo, a Parfum version called Aqua de Jo Parfum. This hot on the heels of last year's EDP version of the much loved classic. There was quite a lot of time between Aqua de Jo and the EDP version, but not a lot of time between the EDP version of that and this new Aqua de Jo Parfum. The brand do say though that this is not just a parfum of Aqua de Jo, it's a reimagining of Profumo. So I'm not sure if that means Profumo is out and the parfum is in, or if they're going to offer both those fragrances side by side. There's been a little rumour knocking around that Profumo might be getting discontinued. If that's the case, seems a little strange that they would change or discontinue what many think is probably the best fragrance in the Aqua de Jo lineup. Does it need changing? if it ain't broke. The brand say that Profumo will be amplified and intensified. The note breakdown looks the same as Profumo, so if it is just a stronger version of Profumo, then I guess I'm okay with that. But if they change it up too much, if they change some of the things that we love most about Profumo, then that might suck a bit. Who knows what's behind these decisions? There can be a multitude of reasons. Maybe the materials they need for Profumo are no longer available to them and they've got to change things up. Maybe their hand is being forced. So rather than just doing one of these hush-hush reformulations, perhaps they've decided to take the opportunity to push this as a new fragrance release. I think they would probably make more money that way. So kind of makes good business sense to me. All just speculation though. If it's as good as or better than Profumo, I'm here for it. Release date? Who the f knows? Some exciting new releases. Hopefully I can be back here with the verdict on all of these sometime soon. Which ones are you most looking forward to? Any upcoming releases you're beyond excited about that I've not mentioned in this video? Let me know in the comments. I love you. I'm going to leave you. Leave a like, do the subbing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.